hello and welcome to this week's midweek Lenten Holden evening prayer worship service. Wherever you are and wherever you find yourself today, whether you've been here for a long time or whether this is your first worship service you are finding yourself in, we are so glad that you have found this place and this space to worship. These Lenten services are brought to you by a collaboration of the downtown Austin churches, which are Austin First United Methodist Church, Christ Church, the Episcopal Community of Austin, and St. Olaf Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Madison Chelberg, and I am one of the pastors at St. Olaf Lutheran Church in downtown Austin, Minnesota. The setting for worship we are using today, and for all of our Lenten midweek services, is the setting of Holden Evening Prayer. All of the words to the songs, if you so choose to sing along with us, will be printed on your screen so you can follow along. We are in our third week of our Lenten sermon series called Unmute, where we are going to be pointing out the differences between and challenges of what our society tells us to be and who God calls us to be. We are called to live as people of faith, changed by a God who is bigger than we could ever comprehend, which means we are called to live fundamentally differently than how our society tells us to live. Tonight, we will hear from Father John Sullivan, the priest at Christ Church Episcopal, as he leads us through God's call to wholeness versus society's reminder of our brokenness. In one of my favorite gospel stories, the healing of the man born blind. Now let us begin our worship together as we join our hearts and voices in the music of Holden Evening Prayer.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were you, your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. May I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus saw the man who was born blind. The man didn't seek Jesus. The man didn't ask for healing. It was Jesus who saw this man and then was moved by the question posed by his disciples to cure his blindness. The question posed by the disciples reveals another kind of blindness that Jesus was addressing. The disciples were wrong about God. They were in the dark, and Jesus was the light of the world. This story teaches us that God's purposes are beyond our understanding, and trying to fit God's purposes into our small and biased worldview is wrong. We need to grow beyond what we think we know. In fact, we are being invited to rethink what we think we know. Rabbi Harold Kushner wrote, being sick or being healthy is not a matter of what God decides that we deserve. The better question is, if this has happened to me, what do I do now? And who is there that might help me do it? Who do we see in the world? The blind? the poor, the ill? Why would we assume that they have done something wrong? I think it's too popular a notion to believe God blesses the good and curses the bad. That good things happen to the good people and bad things happen to bad people. Jesus pushes back against this notion. Not only here, but in other places as well. He wanted his disciples and us to grow beyond these ways of thinking. An approach to our common faith that asks questions of who, when, and how others have sinned and how God might punish them is an approach that misses the mark. Our Lord made this very clear throughout his ministry in many ways. Our understanding of the absolute and expansive love of God is too small. And in any case, ours is to love God and love our neighbor. The disciples were being called, as we are being called, to reach out to our neighbors in need with care and consolation, to look at others with compassion and understanding, to understand that we are in the same boat, inextricably tied to one another in common circumstance, to seek and offer the message of wholeness without which we can never be who we were meant to be. Jesus told his disciples that it was neither the man who sinned nor his parents, that the work of God is rather to bring healing and wholeness. 
During this time of pandemic and national and political turmoil, we are pressed and pushed in many ways that few of us have ever been. And during this Lenten season, we are invited to dive deeply into our own responses to those around us. We are invited to question our own assumptions about sin, about God's purpose in the world, and about our neighbors. In this reading of Jesus healing the man who was born blind, we see Jesus seeking wholeness, first for this neighbor and second for his disciples. Jesus cured this man's blindness and wants to cure ours as well. Thanks be to God. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>